a, a picture of a page out of my uh, digital shop manual for the Mustang. It also covers uh, some of the other intermediate Ford and Lincoln Mercury vehicles of that era. Uh, this gives you kind of an idea what the suspension exploded diagram looks like for this car. Uh, to give you some idea of what I've been trying to assemble with all this, it makes it a little easier to give you a, a picture of this. That way you can kind of see how the stuff goes together. This is the control arm pivots, the new ones. One issue that they ran into with these things, the way the caps actually turn onto the ends of these to hold them into the control arms, you put grease in them, and once you started tightening these down, you would have like a hydraulic action. The grease would be trapped in here, and it would actually force the O-rings out of the inside of these so that they would leak grease. And as a result, they wouldn't be lubricated very well, and they would start to wear prematurely. The new style ones, which is what this is, actually came with alumine holes drilled in it and tapped so that you can grease them. The original ones, uh, most of those didn't have alumites in them. These are the ones off of my old ones, and it looks like at some point someone may have uh, drilled and tapped these for alumites and then took them back out and uh, put caps in them. The driver's side, which is the one this one is, actually had alumites in it. And if you notice, they were turned at a right angle so that when they were in the car, bolted to the uh, shock towers, you could actually have access to these with a grease gun so that you could uh, grease them while they were on the car. But again, the problem was the fact that the grease had to fight around all of those threads, so it never really made it too far into the uh, edges of it. As a result, I think you can kind of see where that is worn down right there. That is a direct result of these caps getting dried out inside either losing the grease or not having enough grease in them and that's what caused uh, the squeaking on the front end of these among you know a few other items but this was one of the most notorious and it was so difficult to get to these in order to repair them like I'm doing now you basically had to disassemble almost the entire front suspension you had to take the springs out you had to uh, take the uh, bolts where they went through the shock tower take these nuts out and reading through the shop manual it actually said you could leave the upper uh, ball joint attached and basically after this was unbolted you could pivot it around on that ball joint out over the top of the tire so you could service this then swing it back around on the ball joint put these back in and bolt them back up well in the process of modifying all this stuff I've been on several websites and I've seen some uh, suggestions and one of the suggestions was to pick out which side you want it to be the top and bottom of these which it really doesn't matter until you install them and take a ziz wheel and cut you a real slight curve basically just down to the bottom hold on just a second so that uh, what it would happen when you did put the grease in there, it would have a path for it to go all the way back up in here. It also said that if uh, you had the caps with the alumites in them, to uh, go ahead and leave the alumites out once you had a little bit of grease in there, settle the car down all the way so that way if there was any pressure from where the uh, shafts rotated a little bit deeper into these whenever the way the car was on it, it would come out the end. Then any grease that overflowed uh, would come out and it wouldn't cause any hydraulic pressure to blow those O-rings out. Then once everything was back down on the ground, you could screw those uh, alumites back in there and if you want to top off the grease a little bit, that's fine. And as the vehicle moved and uh, heat regenerated and any of that grease that was extra got liquefied, it could run out if it needed to, but yet it wouldn't drain all of it out. So with that in mind, I'm going to uh, shut you guys off for a few minutes and I'm going to uh, go ahead and cut the curves in these uh, pivot arms and then I'm going to start reassembling these uh, upper control arms and go ahead and start putting some of the suspension stuff together to make sure it's all going to fit. Stand by.
there. See, that didn't take very long at all. You don't really want to grind too far on these. You don't want to take a lot of the threads or anything off. But basically all you're doing is creating enough of a channel right here so that that grease can actually uh, cavitate from one side to the other. Or I'm sorry, cavitate is probably not the right word. Uh, flow from one end to the other so that all of these threads get lubricated and nothing really ever gets dried out. Uh, it's recommended if you drive the vehicles uh, quite often that you do the lubrication on them again once a year just like you do any other uh, chassis or suspension components. But uh, you can kind of get an idea how far that is. There's not a whole lot of depth to it and it didn't take very long at all and it's kind of like cheap insurance. It's not really going to affect the threads or anything because once these things are installed it doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, turns to it. The thing's probably only flexed three quarters of a turn, if that, during normal suspension movement once they're installed on the car, so it's not like they're ever going to be uh, uh, tightened down and loosened up a whole lot. So, But I'm going to keep uh, putting everything together. Oh, sorry about that. Give me a little bit of a here today, sorry. Uh, anyway, with all of that uh, coming back together, I'll get everything uh, cleaned up, uh, reassembled, and as I start putting the stuff together, I'll uh, turn you back on so that way you guys can kind of see the sequence of how everything uh, goes together, uh, particularly like that uh, drawing on the uh, shop manual I showed you just a second ago. That's something I would recommend if you uh, find them available for whatever vehicle you're working on, is to get you one of those uh, CDs. They're a lot easier than actual shop manuals. You don't have to worry about getting them dirty or getting the pages all torn up or greasy. Uh, if you have to uh, and you wanted to see something that uh, a little bit more detail, you could always take it somewhere and print it out. Uh, that's what I do on some of the stuff I use more. I like it for the fact it's portable. I think this manual has like 900 something pages in it since it covers kind of like a family of vehicles instead of just the one vehicle itself. The repair manuals and stuff that you get now, the like the Haynes manuals, the Chilton manuals and all that stuff, they're more or less just a, a real loose guide. It's, general disassembly, things of that nature. If you want to know stuff that is particular to the vehicle that you're working on, I highly recommend you getting a, a shop manual. Uh, on the newer vehicles, I'm not sure if they're available, and if they are, I'm sure they're probably pretty expensive, seeing as complex as the modern vehicles have gotten with all the computers and everything in them. But uh, every time I buy a vehicle, I always at least get uh, the repair manual for it at a very minimum, and if there are shop manuals available for it, and especially if I plan on keeping the car like I did this Mustang, uh, you definitely want to try and get you a shop manual. It just goes so much further in depth telling you all of the stuff that the uh, standard generalized repair manuals aren't going to tell you. Uh, a lot of times it'll even show you specialized little tools and stuff that uh, you can make or maybe purchase through whoever the manufacturer of your car is to do some of these little oddball jobs that are almost impossible to do if you don't either find those tools, fabricate them, or purchase them somewhere. So with that, I'm going to turn you guys back off and continue grinding the other shaft down so I can start getting these uh, upper control arms put together, and when I start doing some further assembly, I'll turn you back on. So stand by.